You look around you and you'll see that there's a plethora of different skin tones and skin shades. Scientists explain this through the theory of natural selection. When the sun shines down, it produces different forms of ultraviolet radiation. Now UVB rays are the important ones here. The reason being is because although they're destructive, they're important because they catalyze the production of vitamin D in the body. And this is important for the modulation of cell growth, the bones, the nerves, muscles and the immune system. The archaic humans lived near the equator and they developed a very brown skin shade for a better chance of survival. This is because skin richer in colour has high concentrations of the substance melanin. Now melanin is an excellent absorber of light and often people call it the natural sunscreen. And this is because of its ability to dissipate 99.9% .9 of absorbed UV radiation. But then some humans began to migrate north and conditions were less intensely affected by the sun. People in the north became deficient in vitamin D for most of the year because their melanin levels were so high that they did not allow the UVB rays in. In order to ensure health and well-being, natural selection occurred. Here, lightly pigmented people were more likely to survive in the north as these areas were less sun-drenched. Now that process occurred a few times and together with a mixture between populations, we now have an array of different skin tones and shades. But with time, society began to attach meaning to and understand skin tones very differently, leading us into a world where certain skin tones were privileged. Oh no, it's not possible. We've all heard of the terms racism, sexism and ageism, but you might not have heard of the term colorism. Now colorism is prejudice or discrimination, favoring people with lighter skin tones. It's generally a phenomenon which um, occurs within ethnic groups, but also due to globalization occurs uh, worldwide now, but especially within African countries, Southeast Asia, India, East Asia, and Latin America. Ironically, where melanin-rich darker skin tones would offer people with more protection from cancer and other health risks that their sun-ridden hot climates might provide. Theorists, especially socialist theorists, um, draw attention to the fact that this is a market based on impossible standards of beauty um, where white people are encouraged to tan and people who are darker skin tones are encouraged to lighten their skin. The issue of colorism though is really one for people with darker skin tones because the pressure to tan is not nearly as intense or damaging um, than the discrimination and prejudice that people with darker skin tones actually face. This is because um, darker skinned individuals are labelled as less competent, less intelligent, um, less beautiful, less accomplished, and generally just inferior. There's nothing inherent or natural about which skin tones or skin colours are more beautiful, but in pigmentocratic societies, we're systematically trained to find darkness being not associated with beauty. But this does not mean that it's true or right. So let's take a look at the history um, surrounding this. Anthropologists, social scientists and other theorists um, believe that colorism has a lot of roots within colonialism and slavery. Colonialism is the trend of uh, particularly white European groups forcefully exploiting and establishing physical and cultural control of a geographical location around the world. Uh, the white colonizers looked a certain way um, and they were considered superior, so their traits and aesthetics became idealized. Similarly, in slavery, um, the white invaders were very much valued. Also something which is important is that the slave owners and the slaves themselves reproduced, um, resulting in offspring with quite a variety of different skin tones and complexions. Now bear in mind, this is a climate with slavery where black people were degraded so far so that they were considered savages and not even human. So as offspring, it would not be something you aimed or hoped to look alike, um, therefore. So the fairer offspring were more valued and actually were considered more human. There were sometimes more than 64 different categories uh, based on racialized features and skin tone, all given a specific name. And the co-chair of the society would actually learn all these shading category names and people were allocated social status based upon this. 
So as we can see, this is also a post-colonial and post-slavery story, whereby colonial violators and enslavers in slavery propagated their ideas about beauty. But some evidence actually suggests that it's much more of an older story, with roots in ancient Hindu texts, um, within biblical imagery, and having also classical Greek roots. It's something which affects women more so, but also significantly men and other gender identifying people. Some people feel in constant anxiety and shame, shielding themselves from the sun and being stigmatised by society's standards, by their peers, by their friends and even actually their own families. They're made to feel ugly, dumb, stupid and worthless. According to Euromonitor's 2010 statistic, the skin lightening industry is set to be, by 2015, worth 10 billion dollars, and that's equivalent to 6,000 million pounds. With Indian skin whitening cream market alone being worth 432 million dollars, so India has one of the largest markets with an estimated 60 to 65 percent of women using one skin lightening product. Nigeria though um, has the most, whereby 77 percent of all women use at least one, according to the World Health Organization. And today, products are available from multinational brands and in many different ranges, including skin lightening products being used in oils for babies. Um, it's a problem for the African American community also. Lighter skinned women were not more likely to be married, but they were more likely to marry high status spouses. Um, skin colour discrimination affects who gets a job, the pay and their success on the job. Similar patterns of inequality we noted actually within education in America and unfortunately skin lightening and skin bleaching has reached new heights. Um, skin lightening and skin bleaching are important risk behaviours because there are a lot of um, potentially damaging consequences from using these products. This includes severe skin damage, mercury poisoning, premature ageing, increased risk of skin cancer, and skin infections, just to name a few. Institutional and social change is what we need, but there is a lot that we can do as individuals. First of all, beauty shouldn't be admired or desired as much as it is actually in the society. It's something which we shouldn't really be looking at when we're judging someone on their worth, including ourselves. Second, if we are to look at beauty, we should question certain notions of beauty and understand that beauty is dynamic and socially constructed to some degree. Let's learn that black, brown and dark people are not only fantastically everyday, but they're normal people, happy people, strong, sexy and beautiful people. Beauty queens, runway models, actors and supermodels. For years, skin colour shade has shaped the lives of black and brown communities. It took generations for these ideologies to be put into place, but it does not need to take us long for us to break them down. Our capacity to change requires multiple levels of analysis to understand how severe the problem is and how it's not actually a trivial thing where it's about, you know, what's naturally beautiful, it's really damaging and it's a big macro problem. So what can you do? You can like the brand new trend of Facebook pages which propagate that dark can be beautiful. Surround yourself and share images, magazines, books and stories of African heritage, of colonialism and of slavery. Teach and create spaces, discussions and campaigns at home, in the workplace, with friends, in school, etc. And remember that buying into ideas that lightness is in alignment with beauty is essentially buying into ideas tied to colonialism and slavery. And now you know. I think this video is actually really important, especially in certain ethnic communities. So I'd really, really encourage you to share it with people who you think it might be relevant to maybe just spark a discussion for. Do it by email, on Facebook, Twitter, and as much as you can, it would really help. I'd like to hear your stories in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Ciao.